possessions. And Xavier will have the ball, and away we go. 20 minutes in regulation, a trip to the Elite Eight. Xavier, undersized, the underdog, trying to hang in there against the two seed in the Arizona Wildcats. And Blue misses. Right away goes to the hole. See Kadeem Allen back on the floor. He played in just five minutes of the first half. He got an early foul trouble. He is a big part of what Arizona wants to do. And we're going to get a foul on Blewett. Two-point Arizona lead. It was Raleigh Alkins who just drew that foul, who hit the shot at the end of the half to put Arizona on top. And here is Allen trying to get back in the game. And an offensive rebound right on cue. Ristich scores, has 11 points now, and the offensive boards are up to 12. We got a foul, count it. Basket is good by Malcolm Bernard and a chance at a three-point play. You have to beat size with speed, period. You have to get down the floor first and not let the defense set up. Look at this. Bernard gets it. He keeps going and attacks it. He has to. You cannot let those seven-footers sit back and wait for you. And the lefty Bernard cannot hit the free throw. Say thank you to our friends from Synergy for providing some of the detailed statistics here tonight. Two-point Arizona lead. Trier struggling from behind the arc. Normally good. 0 for 4 from 3. Marketing lines up a 3. And it's Ristich with a rebound, and he is fouled. I love marketing outside shooting the 3. But the great thing about the great players in the game, you always take advantages of mismatches. He's 7 foot, he's inside. He should get in the post, down with his other big fella, and make sure that they impose their will. They're already dominating on the offensive boards. But his size can help much inside instead of letting him off the hook every play behind the three-point line. Now Ristich, two fouls in the first half. Played 13 minutes, has 12 points now on five of seven, and just about everything is inside. And a lot of easy baskets and a lot of offensive rebounds. Xavier has 13 total rebounds. Arizona has 13 offensive rebounds. And they are plus nine on the offensive glass. Major concern, I'm sure Chris Mack. When O'Mara's on the floor for Xavier, he does settle that part of the game down, but how many minutes can you ask out of Sean O'Mara? We'll see. Arizona started by scoring the first seven points of this game, and they're off to a good start here. Tyreek Jones, nice pass by Makura. Jones with the catch and the finish. Jones' strength actually neutralizes the size of Arizona. Jones has a mismatch inside. Need to go to him. And Ristich will take him on. And that was pretty. Right-handed little hook shot. Either one of these guys can card each other. Ristich and Jones should be a good battle the rest of the game. Ristich, the junior from Serbia by way of the Sunrise Christian Academy. This international flair here for Arizona. They're big men. Marketing from Finland. And we got a kick ball. We'll stay in the possession of Arizona. You don't always have to set the screen. Look at how your defender is playing you that time, young players. Look, the slip automatically mm -hmm. catch the defense lead. And a freight train coming, too, yes. when he catches and turns. Tyreek Jones, the freshman from Connecticut, he'll take a seat. O'Mara is in. Makura slips free. Makura with a left and scores the basket. Hanging in the air, J.P. Makura. Chance at a three-point possession. Ristich picks up his third. This is a college and an NBA play. It's called the flex. If you're an NBA fan, Utah Jazz made it famous with Stockton coming off that first screen, transitioning. And if you're a college fan, you've definitely seen it from Indiana and Princeton multiple times. Three fouls on Ristich. He has 15 points. Sean Miller is going to let it ride for now. And Makura can't finish off the three-point possession. Two-point game, Arizona with the lead. Trip to the Elite Eight is on the line and a date with the top seed, the Bulldogs of Gonzaga University, who won a thriller in our first game against West Virginia. That's a turnover. Makura disrupted it, and that'll be Xavier Ball. 
Sure, the intensity. He's trying to do it all. He's yelling at his teammates to get involved with himself. He sprints and just anticipates this just like a DB. Good job. Turnover. Xavier, a warning on their bench. All the assistants stood up cheering that turnover. And Terry Weimer sat him down. Here's Blewett. Misses. Rebound by Hawkins. He wants to push him. Good job getting back for Xavier. Poked by Makira. Markkinen wrestles it back, and now a foul on Gooden. His second foul, the freshman point guard. You do not want to foul Arizona. Arizona's third highest free throw in school history. 676%. They have four guys that can flat out knock it down from the free throw line. Do not let it pile up. Do not get in the bonus early if you're Xavier. I was interested to see how the Xavier freshman handling that first weekend as Ristich gets it deep again and scores again. And now with 17 points, Ristich has all of Arizona's points in the second half. Breaking free, Malcolm Bernard with a two-handed jam. Stay aggressive, attack the guys inside. Big fellas have to be there to help the penetration from the guards. Hawkins. And that's a merit to clear it away. And Gooden will run the point. You know, Chris, you get into the first weekend, and it was a great run by Xavier. They won their first two games, but then they sit a week, and all the hype and all the interviews. As Bernard hits another one first, the dunk, now a three. And just like that, Xavier is on top. We talked about and tried to downplay the relationship between the coaches, but we saw Coach Kerr here earlier. I've interviewed him multiple times, and he always gives credit to his mentor, not just Phil Jackson, but specifically Coach Popovich. He talks about how much he learned from him. I think the same goes uh, for these two coaches, too, mentor and mentee. And all those great years with Lute Olsen in Arizona as well, and so many great players. Yes. Shot clock down to three. Trier, a lot of dribbling here. We'll put it up. No, and there's O'Mara. They're a different team with O'Mara on the floor. Trier actually avoided contact that time. Next time he'll see, I have the guy up in the air. I need to go up into his body. Trier is struggling. Four points, two for nine from the field. He's missed all four of his three-point attempts. Trier averages 17.1 a game. Akira drops it off. O'Mara! Two-handed jam! Bill Murray loves it. Timeout, Arizona. Xavier assist for J.P. Makura, the junior from Lakeville, Minnesota. Last year, the sixth man of the year in the Big East. Prominent starting role this year. So Xavier has the ball. Go check it. Xavier up with Arizona with the ball. Ristich has eight points this half. And he'll sit now as Comanche comes in. Ristich with three fouls. Almost lost the handle there. And Hawkins. Well, that's a nice finish. A little teardrop. A quick shot, too, in the lane. One point game. Clinton Gooden, freshman point guard from Kentucky. His remade roster. There's McCure. He springs free, but a whistle. And I believe we're going to get that on Allen, perhaps. And that'll take us to a timeout. Think about the tradition of those two schools. That's just going to be a fun one to watch. And yeah, Ho-Hum, North Carolina in that bracket, too, with five yeah, yeah, national just, championships. Just five. That is a blue <laughs> nice. blood division uh, region there with... Butler is the other Big East team along with Xavier, and that's going to go the other way. Whoa. Blewett and Allen B.A. have been going at it all game, or the second half. Right before the break, we saw it, and that's a great call by the officials right there. Blewett with the push off and loses the ball at the same time. There was a little bit of a delay there, and Pat Adams, who is officiating his 11th Sweet 16, a guy who has done four Final Fours. Wow made that call emphatically and gives the ball back to Arizona. Now remember one of the points of emphasis this year is to create some space in front of the offensive player. And so I think that's what Chris Mack's argument was. Here's Markkinen. Yes. Well, he has a sweet stroke. That's why I like him on all positions of the floor. When he stands at the top of the key waiting for a three-pointer, he's easy to check. But when he's all over the floor, you don't know where he is. So difficult to go. Arizona back on top. Almost a pick by Al. He does. He deflected it. 
All the way in and destroyed by Malcolm Bernard. That was easy pickets. Blew it with marking it on him. High arcing three. Back iron. Trier with the rebound. What great action here. Last few possessions. Now Trier lost it. Ends up with Markkinen. And Alkin says, give me a breather here. <laughs> Incidentally, going into that last timeout, it was Hawkins who got the foul, not Allen. So he still plays with two. Kadeem Allen probing. Finds Trier. Three-point try is up. And good. Steve Kerr knows a thing or two about three-point shooting. <laughs> and one finally goes down for Trier, his first make of the night. You're right about that. But it was the patience of Allen being a deep boy on offense, attracting two men, finding the open guy cross court. 7-0 run. Looking to answer. Front iron. Blewett comes up short. Blewett started 7-7 seven of seven from the field. He has missed his last five shots. Yeah, what do we have here? A little moisture on the floor, I think. They want to get this cleaned up. And both benches have been warned already tonight. And so here we go. Under 13 minutes remaining in regulation. Arizona on a burst here. 7-0 run to get him ahead. Four-point lead for the Wildcats. Blewett sits. Allen stays. You don't imagine Blewett's going to be on the bench long. Mark it up. It's six on the shot clock now. Gets it back. Jackson Cartwright gives it up. Here's Allen for three. Short. Markinen runs it down. Another offensive rebound. A long board for the Cats. To break a zone, you have to have a man in the middle. I would love to see Markinen get in that position because he can pass and score and shoot over everyone. It's a long time to play defense if you're Xavier operating in that 2-3 zone. Here's Trier. Does he have it? In and out. And Bernard able to save it. Wow, what a play. That could have been another opportunity for Arizona. Excellent work by Malcolm Bernard. Xavier is fighting hard here, trying to hang with the two-seed Arizona. This program so connected with their coaches. Gates fumbled it, gets a pass to Bernard for three. Yes, sir. It looked messy, but it ends up rosy for Xavier. Another slip of the screen, but this time he slipped it for a teammate. He did not have an open layup through the cross-court pass, but that's what you want to do. Switch up the way that you execute certain plays. Bernard's at two threes now. He's given him a lot. Trier, eight on the shot clock. Taking on O'Mara. Nothing home. Now Markin got to get a tough shot up. Akira's on him. Long range three. And O'Mara taps it to his teammate Gates. And here comes Xavier. They hold serve. Chance to take the lead. Akira goes. Pass to Gooden. Look out. Oh, Gooden hanging in the air. And a right handed jam. Xavier on top. Arizona is going to have to use their size. That is their advantage. Get it to the big fella in the middle, and then he can look over passing lanes and find open guys for a layup. But to just sit out and hope that you make threes is just not good enough. Nine lead changes. Run Arizona that Xavier wouldn't be able to keep up. And then on the other side, Arizona showing their toughness by staying in the game. See how long Blue it's going to sit here. And almost a turnover, and it might be a turnover. Ball's on the floor. That is a held ball. Tie it up. Possession arrow belongs to Arizona. By the way, you saw the number on Arizona, the three-point shooting. They are settling a lot. They have shot 21 three-pointers tonight, made four. Arizona's missed 12 of the last 13. Blewett, who was most of the offense in the first half, has all of the Xavier misses in the second half. As a team, Xavier is 8 for 12 in the second half, and Blewett is 0 for 4. Certainly wouldn't be here without him, though. What a first-half performance by Blue, who's been a second-half performer here recently. I was going to say, Coach said he's in second uh -huh. half, so he can still come on. That's Trier in the corner, and he rattles it home. He is starting to find his stroke now, and the 10th lead change puts Arizona back on top. Trier now two for two. His last two three-point attempts, he started 0 for 7 
Or check it out for five from behind the arc. Gates. Short. And there's the rebound by Bernard. Well, he's given him big minutes. Malcolm Bernard. The grad senior from Florida A&M University. He is so happy to be in this environment playing in an NCAA tournament. Didn't think that was going to happen. He's making the most of it. O'Mara wants the rock. He's been begging for it. Ristich right on him. O'Mara. It goes. Soft touch by the big man from Illinois. Great job by the guards paying attention to him. When he calls forcefully like that, that means he feels he has a mismatch. Get it to the big fella. Saw a shot there. Chris Mack's daughters, Laney and Kaylee, they are into every second of this game. All tied at 55. Trier trying to work with Markkinen. Will take it himself. The stroke's coming. Oh, He's heating man. up. And he used a little bit of old man game there. It wasn't about speed. It was about spacing. A little left shoulder bump and a knockdown. Trier scored 14 in Arizona's win against St. Mary's in the second round. The freshman of the year last year. And it's one and done. Now Trier's got it. Wants to move it. Trier will take it to the corner. Marketing. Passes up a three. And now Jackson Cartwright. Makura there with the rebound. Love to see Mark then get in that post. He has a size advantage over anyone that checks him, and he can shoot, he can back pivot, he can get space anytime that he wants and knocks it down. Makura working on Trier. Pulls up and hits it. Jump shot by JP Makura. And Xavier has tied it up. Mystic. Just gave a little bit of bump to McCure, and I just I have to do it in real time because these guys are getting feisty out there. Coming down, Ristic gave an elbow to McCure, like, you're not going to keep doing that. Think about this, too. They are buying, Xavier is buying valuable minutes, rest minutes for Trayvon Blewett. As this game has remained close, still tied. Mack keeps Blewett on the bench. Turnover. Ristic looking for a foul. Didn't get it. Xavier in transition. Good and all the way in. No follow is good. McCure. Wow. This guy's got a heart. Do not want to overemphasize this point, but only because he is so talented. McCurin, he needs to get the ball more, and he needs to get it inside. 14 points. O'Mara returns to the court as well. It'll be Arizona ball. Xavier by two. Keanu Pinder in the game for the first time for Arizona. And now Allen. And that's McCure with a rebound. He's everywhere. Man, what a performance. Bounce pass to Blewett. Blewett returns. And push off. We've got an elbow. That's on Arizona. Going to get Pender on that. Chris Mack's wife, Christy Mack, known as Christy Hester, one of the great, all time greats at Dayton. She was a fantastic basketball player. At Dayton for the Flyers in the Athletic Hall of Fame. And she is intense. Rally it up. She's a hooper. She knows fans. what's going on. Here's Blewett. All those moves. Works himself free inside. Trayvon Blewett returns. He had been 0 for 4 in the second half. Xavier by 4. Under 7 minutes to go. Trier scores. Wow. Could have been a travel, could have been a foul, no whistles, and Trier goes strong to the hole. Sean Miller just preaching to us about his team. It is a constant reminder. We have got to be tough. Xavier is going to bring that heat. An 11 seed that has survived this long. A team that's had to overcome a lot of adversity. Injuries, players leaving the program. A team that lost six straight games in February, and here they are. And O'Mara is fouled. And free throws coming for Sean O'Mara. O'Mara has been calling for the ball, feed the big man, but again, old man game, good game, fundamentals, going to work, however you want to put it, whatever you want to say. But the tricks that this guy, Blewett, has in his bag, man, he can put it in the book. Blewett, another 20 point game in the NCAA tournament, scored 29 against Florida State. Backed it up here, short on the free throw. Hey, a reminder, follow, follow all of your favorite NCAA events throughout the year with the official NCAA sports app. Get scores, brackets, live updates.
and live streaming of NCAA championships all year long with NCAA sports. So Ristich go to the bench, four fouls on the seven-footer. And O'Mara missed them both. Not a bad free throw shooter, O'Mara, at 72%, but those are two key misses, two-point games. Ona down with the ball. Kick it across. Trier passed up to three. On the take now. Wow, Trier scores. My goodness. Hanging in the air against the big man, O'Mara. What a finish. The up and under, the pump fake. Trier with 16 points now, including two threes in the second half. He's got eight rebounds as well. Here's Makura for three. Wide right. Rebound from Jackson Cartwright, who will get it organized for Arizona. Trier has scored the last 12 points for the Wildcats. Under five and a half, Trier fires again and hits a huge three. Alonzo Trier with 19 and his third three of the half. You see he's being aggressive. He wants those shots, calling for the ball and until some of his teammates come and kind of help him with scoring. Namely McCarron, he's going to have to do it himself. Blue it misses. McCarron kept it alive. Ball's loose and look who's got it, Trier. Trier has scored the last 15 points for Arizona. 19 for the game. He has nine rebounds after that board. Arizona by three. Can add to it. Why not? Trier. Covered up by Gooden. Shot clock down to six. And now Allen for three. From deep range, another three ball. They're starting to fall for Arizona. Just like that, six-point Wildcat lead. Timeout, Chris Mack. Ten in San Jose. Gonzaga winning the first game in a grinder against West Virginia. The top seed has moved on. And now Arizona on a 10-0 run, their biggest run of the game. Up six, Xavier with the ball. Trap comes. And here's McCura now, kicks it out, blew it for three. Short. And look who's flying high for the rebound, Kadeem Allen. And now Allen pushing it. Allen just hit a huge three, and Makura with a foul. His third. Great play call by Coach Mack, that last out-of-bounds play. They just didn't get the shot that they, they just didn't knock it down. Blue, it got a wide-open shot. You can't be frustrated, four minutes left. Just continue to lock in on defense as you have been doing if you're Xavier. Note the fouls. Each team with six. That'll put both teams on the line with the next one. Four minutes. Marketing been quiet the second half. Tyreek Jones is on him. Marketing spins away from the double, kicks it out. Shot clock gets deep again. Now it's seven. And that is a foul. And I believe they're going to get Gooden with a push. So with six on the shot clock, Parker, Jackson, Cartwright with a one and one. And the foul on Gooden. You see where Xavier ranks free throw percentage. Zona one of the best. 76% free throw shooting team. Now Jackson Cartwright at 69% from the line. And he hits the first. The CBS Sports app is your app for the tournament. Follow your bracket, watch highlights, get instant team and upset alerts. Download the CBS Sports app now to experience every moment of the action. Does Xavier have another counter punch? Trying to fight through a 10-0 Arizona run. And two free throws. Jackson Cartwright extends the lead to eight. Key possessions offensively for the X. Matches the biggest lead for Arizona. They led 10 to 2 after a 7 0 run to start the game. Blewett gives it up. Here's Gooden. He gives it up. Right back to Blewett. 4 3. Yes! 
The dribble drive, three-man weave for Xavier has worked so well because they move the ball from side to side with the dribble, making the bigs of Arizona have to move laterally, looking for the open gaps and the open shooters. What a performance by Blue at 23 points. This group of versatile pieces and their star player that has played out as advertised for Xavier. Again, shot clock gets deep, down to six. Allen with Makura on him, gets a step all the way in and scores. Boy, Allen is explosive to the basket. What a smart play. Everyone in the gym thought he was going to step back for a jumper. He did not settle, catching the defense off guard. Seven point deficit. Xavier trying to come back, and another one. Three point bomb by Malcolm Bernard, his third of the game. They won't die. Xavier's been the underdog this entire run, even going into the Big East tournament. Beat Butler. Lost to Creighton. Won the first two games to arrive here. No answer from Trier. Makira pushing it. Pulls up for three. Back iron. And look at Bernard. And he's fouled. Over the back. Oh, Bernard running the floor. He hits the three. Now a huge rebound for Xavier. If you are Arizona, this is when you impose your will by going inside, by getting extra rebounds. Do not let Xavier off the hook right here. But here's what I talked about, the penetration. Three-man weave, look at that. Penetrate to the middle, spread out, drive, kick. Every shooter wants to catch that ball coming from the basket, Oh, right? it feels so good when you have those. <laughs> you have it lined up and you know your teammates looking for you. You're just waiting to let it fly. Malcolm Bernard hits the first. Man, is he giving Chris Mack and Xavier some huge minutes here. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament, NCAA.com. Women's Final Four is in Dallas on March 31st and April 2nd. And Makira is going to sit. 2.09 remaining in regulation. Two free throws for Malcolm Bernard. 15 points for Bernard. No jump fouls if you're Xavier. If you're Arizona, execute. Do not let him off the hook with a pretty shot. Trier has been the story in the second half for Arizona. He'll pull this one in the face of Bernard. No. And a foul on Markkinen. Over the back. Free throws for Xavier. Markkinen hit for the foul. Shot goes up. If you rebound by committee, mm. you can usually get the foul and just over the back right there and give the Xavier guard, Xavier guard some credit for getting in there and forwards, getting there amongst the trees. A little over 75% blew it, hits the first and has a chance to tie this game after Arizona had matched their biggest lead of eight. Supposed to be resting, JP McCure. I, I was just about to. I, I, I was just about to say, <laughs> sit man, down. sit down, relax. <laughs> he's, he's he's coming pumped. back in. There's Blewett's parents, a couple of former Marines, right there, Renardo and Miriam, and they've seen their son tie this game. 71-71, a 7-0 Xavier answer. Allen gives it to Trier. Malcolm Bernard on him. Two seven footers on each side of Bernard. Here comes Trier. Well, a lot of dribbling here, Chris. Shot clock down to five. Trier had it tipped briefly, and now it's blocked. First, Gates got a hand on it, then blew it with the block. Xavier can take the lead. Blew it. Pulls it up. Short. Allen with the board. He's going fast. One on four. And wisely pulls it back. Blewett did not have to rush that shot. I know he's feeling it, but both teams now are going to have to impose their will. Drive, try to get maybe an open three or a shot, but go to the hole. You have size. Most importantly, attack the boards. Maybe get an extra possession. Starting five on the floor for Arizona. Under a minute remaining in regulation. Ristich. Tyreek Jones is on him. Ristich picks it up. Ristich shoots. Air ball. And that's Xavier ball. Oh, and don't forget Malcolm Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. They've gotten wow. great production. Let's yes. see. A lot of options here. Let's see what Xavier has. All tied at 71. Who's going to take that big shot? Dump it inside. O'Mara. O'Mara scores. 
Great call, Chris. Into the big man. The neutralizer in the paint. Xavier on top. 13 seconds separating the game clock and the shot clock. Massive possession for Arizona. Allen, little runner. Can't get it to go. And there's O'Mara with the rebound and a whistle. O'Mara will shoot free throws. And Arizona in trouble with 22 seconds left. Young fellas, you see the swerve and the seal. You can do that. You don't need a play call for you. You can actually run down the court and just seal like this if you want to. O'Mara has been calling for the ball, telling the guards, get him the rock. He finishes on one end, but guess what? This is more important, the seal, and see if he can knock down two. Now remember, he just missed his last two free throws. He's got a chance to give Xavier a two possession lead here. Has to hit them both. And he cannot hit the first. That is Arizona ball. Shot clock is off. Arizona now two. Perhaps the last possession. Trier, he's been hot. Three pointer is up. Trier, no. And the ball is loose. And it is Xavier. Bernard comes away with it. Clock ticks. And that's it. Xavier has upset Arizona. Well, I'm looking at coach, look around this arena like you're taking it in. What's in your mind? I am taking it in. You know, I'm just, I'm so proud of our guys. You know, we got down eight. And, uh, you know, it's about four minutes, four and a half minutes to go down eight uh, on the West Coast. And, you know, we just talk to our team about, hey, listen, we don't have to get it all back in, in, a, in a possession or two. We gotta get stops. We gotta take the best available shot. And just like in, you know, when, when, you, when you win big games, you have guys to step up. We had some guys really step up. The guy next to you, I don't know if he can breathe. Trayvon, can you just explain the excitement here of what you just experienced? I mean, it's unexplainable. I know, I mean, never been to the Elite Eight before. Uh, it's been a while since we last done it. So, uh, I mean, it's, this feeling right now is surreal, and I, I'm just going to soak it in with my guys right now. At halftime, coach is talking about some adjustments that had to be made, or you wouldn't be here on Saturday. You did that. How are you able to keep the faith and hang in there in the second half when things were not quite sure? I mean, really just locking in and buying in. I mean, you know, we never split apart, you know, when the game went out of our favor. Uh, we stayed strong, and we, we knew at the end of the game if we followed the game plan, we were going to win. I know you're still absorbing all of this, but believe it or not, on Saturday, you're right back here against Gonzaga. Any thoughts at all about that? Well, it beats the alternative being back in Cincinnati watching the game, but they're a great program. They've had an unbelievable year, and uh, but so is Arizona. You know, they, they were uh, the, the toughest team we play. If you get this far, that's what's going to happen. Coach, congratulations. Trayvon, we'll see you guys on Saturday. I right, appreciate it. All right, as we wait for Xavier to get settled, just a quick reminder on cell phones, if you turn those off for the uh, vibrate position, and um, another reminder, no videotaping in here. Quick uh, cell phone pick is okay. We'll wait for uh, Coach Mack before we get started. Also note the game has, game time has been announced for Saturday. 3.09 Pacific is the tip off for those that haven't heard already.
Okay, we're ready to get started with Xavier. Uh, we have Coach Chris Mack here. And then uh, next to him, we have Trayvon Blewett, J.P. Mercura, and Malcolm Bernard. We'll have uh, Coach open it with a, an opening statement, and then we'll turn to questions after that. Coach? Well, obviously an emotional game, uh, a game I'm, I'm really proud of our kids, uh, our guys. They battled uh, tooth and nail. You know, we, uh, we got down eight points with about four and a half minutes to go, and, uh, you know, I, I just told them to not try to get all back in one or two possessions, but, you know, it's gotten to the point where uh, they, they already know that. You know, they, they just sort of echo, Coach, we got it. You know, we understand. And that, that hasn't always been the case. And for us to be able to go out and, put together consecutive stops and, and come down and execute. Um, so it's a lot about how much our team's grown. You know, we, um, I personally have so much uh, love for Sean and his staff. And I know it's, it's heartbreaking for them because they had a special year, um, a special season. And I know it's, it's tough. But, um, you know, I'm, today's a Xavier day. And, and uh, I'm proud of these guys here at the uh, dais. OK, hands for questions. Go in the front first. Just do your name and affiliation yeah. first time. Pat Brennan with the Cincinnati Enquirer. Congrats, Chris. Thanks, guys, um, I know I haven't been on the beat the longest, Chris, but that was the most animated I've ever seen you on the sideline. Can you, are you able to verbalize uh, what this means to you and the program and what it, how you feel for these guys? Well, I just think that any team that can get you know, through the uh, eye of the needle to get to an Elite Eight, um, you're, you're playing unbelievable teams. And, you know, I told these guys that, uh, after our first week in Orlando, which I thought we played uh, you know, selfless basketball, I thought we competed and played hard. Uh, there were a lot of people talking about how we had a favorable draw. And I think that bothered our guys. You know, it was almost like we, we beat the second place Big Ten team um, pretty convincingly in the second half. You know, we, uh, we throttled Florida State a three seed, and, and all of a sudden it was about how Florida State wasn't um, the team that everybody talked about. And uh, I think our guys earned a, a lot today, but they had already earned that in, in my book, the way we battled back from the six-game losing streak a long time ago. So, yeah, it was emotional and uh, really happy that our guys played to win every possession tonight. Okay, we go on the left, second row. I know you, congratulations on the victory, and I know it's, you just won the game, but your thoughts on facing Gonzaga on Saturday? I have no thoughts about Gonzaga at this point. And I'm not being flip. I, I know Karnuski, if I mispronounced his name, I apologize. I, I know they have Nigel Goss. I know Mark Few has done an incredible job. I, I don't know a lot of their players. Jonathan Williams, we tried to get on a transfer, and he didn't give us much. Um, I put all our, our efforts into focusing on Arizona. Go ahead. Chris, uh, Chris, can you take us through that last play? Was that something you drew up with the intention of getting it to Sean with Ristic off the court? Or? Yeah, well, when we came to the timeout, it was 50 seconds left in the game. And um, I, I, I called a play, uh, I think, two series, right? Two pairs. And, and we felt like it was too long developing. And by the time the shot would have gone up, whether we had made it or not, Arizona would have had the ball with less than a shot clock's worth of possession. So I, I opted to go with a little bit of a quicker play. That one had worked for us earlier in the game. We felt like, uh, you know, they didn't press us, so Q was able to get the ball near half court because we wanted to go two for one down the stretch. And just fortunately, Sean was able to catch a great ba pass by Trey and put it in through all that traffic and, um, you know, gave guys a boost of confidence. Then we had to defend. All right, go up front again. Uh, can you talk about uh, solving Ristic and marketing? Because it seems they, Gave you guys fits early on there. How tough was that, and how big was Sean and, and Rashid? Yeah, it's just a challenge when, um, you know, we, we wanted to keep the ball in front of us. They have uh, elite athleticism, an ability to get to the rim, whether we play man or zone. And I said at halftime that, um, you know, I, I didn't want to come into the locker room and just, you know, blast our guys for not blocking out because that wasn't the case. The problem was we weren't containing the ball and dribble penetration in the zone. And so when the shot went up, our bigs were helping in no position to block out. And I said, we, we, if we can figure out a way, whether we're man or zone, to keep the ball in front of us, at least it'll give us an opportunity to rebound the ball. And we weren't perfect in the second half, but we were in the last three, four minutes um, of, regular, uh, of the game. And that's uh, the reason that you know, we were able to win. I told them first shots won't beat us, second shots will. And we didn't give up any second shots down the stretch. Go over on the left. 
Jay Alter with the Big East Digital Network, Trayvon, JP, you lost to this Arizona team in the same spot when you were a freshman. What does it mean to you to come back in your junior year and advance to the Elite Eight? Um, it feels good, you know, uh, just for one, just to be able to, you know, kind of get that, you know, revenge that we've been looking for and, and two, just to make it to Elite Eight. I mean, um, it's been a while since, you know, the program has done it and just to get back there is just a surreal feeling. You know, I would say I'm, um, I'm extremely happy on how we played together today. Um, and uh, I'm very proud of everyone on our team. Um, we got a lot of tough guys and we played together. And I'm happy that we're advancing. <coughs> say on the left. Sandeep Chandok with the Spartan Daily. Uh, question for JP. JP, you, uh, you played a great game. You, you kept your composure. How are you able to do that, especially when you guys get down? And then how do you keep your composure to bring this team back in it? You know, just staying level-headed. Um, my teammates have extreme confidence in me. Um, I get riled up a little bit. I get a little bit into the game a little bit. Little and bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. And um, I just got to stay poised and, and just know that my teammates have my back at all times. Back in the front. Malcolm, you uh, shot very efficiently tonight. Uh, how much was the idea of this run ending going through your mind throughout the game? And uh, how do you feel right now? Uh, <laughs> I feel incredible, um, happy, I'm very excited, um, and I just really didn't want our season to end. Uh, we worked so hard, uh, not only in the off season but throughout the year, battling adversity, and uh, I just didn't think it was time for our season to end. Go on the fourth row down. Uh, for the three of you, I'm Sarah Cazell with the W.TV. I know Coach said he's got no thoughts on Gonzaga, but I'm wondering if any of the three of you saw them at any point during the regular season and, and what you think about them. Uh, no, I didn't get to catch them during the regular season, so, you know, my answer is the same as coaches. You know, really no thoughts. We were just preparing for the next team, and that was Arizona. I don't know much about them. I just know they got a big guy. That's, a, that's about it. That's all I really know. Same here. Yeah, I don't know much about them except Nigel Goss. And that, 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 that's not disrespectful. I mean, they play their games. It's, you know, our guys are tucked in bed and, you know, by 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And <laughs> so they, they, they don't necessarily watch, the, you know, the West Coast. And I'm sure Gonzaga hasn't seen Xavier play much either. So um, the coaching staffs are very well prepared, uh, I'm sure, for both programs. Um, you know, we've done advanced scouting with a couple of assistants. Uh, so those guys will, will tutor our team and, uh, and myself here over the next 24 hours. I know. Yep. On the left there against the curtain. You know, Ryan Leong with the Associated Press Radio Network. And you kind of mentioned this already, but it, when you look at the kind of matchup where you don't see very often between your team and Gonzaga, is that kind of what makes March Madness special? Um, I, it makes it special for me. <laughs> um, I, I'm sure you know, fans are going to choose their favorite teams, but um, I don't know what you're insinuating, you know, because we're small Jesuit schools or anything like that. But um, you know, we're, we're, about, we're about good basketball, and, and um, you know, we got competitive guys. Our, both programs have a storied tradition and um, started well before me and started before Coach Few uh, with Coach Monson. And so it's going to be a great game, and uh, we look forward to playing it. Gonzaga's had our number the couple times we've played them, so we've got to figure out a way to do better. Well, the back by the speaker on the left. Coach and fellas, can you guys talk about regrouping after the loss of Sumner and, and how long it took you to do that? And what have you been able to, you know, how did you overcome that? Go ahead, fellas. Uh, well, I mean, losing Ed was tough just because he was a, a key part to our team. And uh, just whenever you have a guy that's playing, you know, majority minutes at the point guard position, it's going to be tough to kind of, uh, you know, really get back into rhythm. But I think um, Ed going down, uh, I think Quentin stepped up. Uh, you know, pretty big for being a freshman. Sure. Um, you know, it just, I, I feel like it was, the click was always there. Uh, we just had to learn how to play for a full 40 minutes. So uh, I would say that's really all it was. You know, obviously Ed went down and then Trey had an ankle injury shortly after that. And honestly, the main thing is we stuck together. Um, we, we are, we're all tough guys. We stuck together and we've been playing, playing tough together. And um, we're not really backing down from anybody. And if you have that mentality, um, you, you, got, you, you can beat a lot of teams. Uh, I feel the same way as, as these guys. So they, they, they said all the words. Do a couple quick ones. 
Anybody left? Okay, right there on the left. Ben Schneider with NBC News Radio. Uh, Coach or Malcolm, or you guys <laughs> want to touch on. I saw David West in the crowd. I know he's very proud to be an alumni. He's had a great career. Uh, just talk about kind of if he talked to you guys, he could give you a message and kind of what leadership he can give you guys. Dave's as big of a Xavier uh, fan as, as our program has. You know, he's arguably the greatest player that's ever wore a Xavier uniform. He's had a special career in the NBA. Um, equally as important, um, Dave's an awesome person. He's a great man. And um, like I said before, he loves Xavier. So when he found out that you know, we were going to be out here and it was an off day, he's got to shoot around tomorrow morning at 8.30. Um, but he's planning on coming back on Saturday. And, and so it just says a lot about uh, not only Dave, but you know, we have a lot of former players that support our program uh, immensely. Guys come back in the summer, uh, play with these guys, work out with them, talk to them, uh, tell them about their experience. And Dave's no different. I think he went around the locker room uh, for a few minutes here after uh, our game tonight, just being a proud alum. Okay, if that's it, I think we'll call it here. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Well, <clears throat> it's never easy when it ends, especially if you have a great team or if you had a great season. And you know, I, I think it's always important, especially as the leader of our of our team and program, that we define our, our own success. And I think if you're a team that is 32 and five, uh, you win both the Pac-12 regular season and also the Pac-12 tournament, and uh, our journey ends in the Sweet 16. You know, it's hard to look at that as, uh, as not getting it done or a failure. But uh, our goal and aspiration is always to challenge for a Final Four and get there. And uh, we pulled up short. Um, I cannot say enough good things about Xavier. Um, it's not because I used to be there. Uh, I think their coach is awesome. Uh, he had his way with us tonight. Um, he called uh, plays after timeouts, underneath out of bounds, he got his players some great shots. Uh, I knew going into the game it was going to be a challenge, and there were a number of breakdowns that we had. You know, some of it is this is our plan, we have to execute it. And then, uh, then there's some other things that, uh, you know what, he's, uh, Chris is a great coach, and they have some clever, older players in Blewett and Mercura, and and they, uh, they all know their role on that team, and they executed. We, we could not guard them. If you just go through the numbers, uh, it wasn't the total points. It was the, the field goal percentage, the three-point percentage. And uh, the thing that kept us in the game is our rebounding. Uh, usually when we have a 35 to 27 rebound margin, we win. And uh, in very few times, if we're up eight points with, I think, under four minutes, do we lose. But we did. Uh, when they had the opportunity to take a shot or make one, they made them. And uh, we had a couple that didn't go in. Uh, equally disappointed in, in myself, you know, our team never really ever established great confidence against the zone. And I think in some ways that was the reason defensively that we weren't as good as we usually are or, or maybe better than we needed to be because it just the game never really felt good. Um, and that's on me. You know, your job when you get to this area, uh, when you get to this level of college basketball, your best players got to be confident. We have to get them shots. I don't care what defense they're playing, 1-3-1, one, 2-3, three, one, three, man to man. And uh, I didn't feel like we did that tonight. And uh, that's probably the, the worst feeling you can have as a coach. This guy to my left, I only talk about him because he's leaving. There has never been anybody. And we, we had some great players, great kids at Xavier in Arizona. That, that means more to me that embodies the good in college basketball than Kadeem Allen. And uh, that's always the hardest part when you know that his time is up. And uh, Parker also did an outstanding job. And you know it's tough to look at our guys in disappointment because we've had so many great moments. And, and that's what makes the tournament so special. And that's also what's the hardest part about dealing with it unless you get all the way to, uh, to the promised land. And, and in my mind, uh, you know, it's going to be a great game between Gonzaga and Xavier. And I wish, I wish Xavier nothing but, but uh, a great journey. I hope they go all the way. Right hands for questions. On the back left by the speaker. Just wonder, Sean, the last three and a half minutes of your offense, what, what did you see there? 
Well, um, first of all, you got to remember our defense. You know, they we had an eight-point lead under the four-minute mark. You know, they needed to make shots, and I, and I thought that they hit two threes in a row, and you have to make the shot you take. That really were barely challenged. You know, when you're under the four-minute mark and you have teams fighting to to stay alive, I mean, you have to jump, you have to run at them, you have to close out with great effort. You have you have to make them miss. You have to understand that even a two is better than a three, and we didn't do that, and they made the shots. And then, you know, when you foul on an offensive rebound really late in the game at 15 feet, we gave them two more points that they didn't even have to work for. But from an offensive perspective, we had both going the wrong way. And, uh, you know, did we get great shots? We have a couple we could have made. Maybe we, we could have made a couple, but it's to my point. Uh, we weren't able to get great looks down the stretch or a wide open one. And uh, that's not these guys, that's on me. We have to be more comfortable uh, this late in the season against that type of defense. And we really just never quite established a rhythm that, that I think we needed to, to continue to play. We'll go in the middle, but fifth row back. Sandy Chanak with the Spartan Daily. Uh, question for Coach. Um, there was a couple moments in the game where a media timeout was approaching and you used a team timeout. Was that something that just didn't cross your mind or you just wanted to get the, uh, stop the runs? We were struggling. We, we didn't have a lot of confidence. We, we, we moved our lineup. We went small and you know, we had a burst where it looked, looked pretty good. And then all of a sudden they would change defenses and, and we, we, we didn't have the right group in. So then we would put the right group in um, and then we, we would establish a couple good things. But, um, you know, when you're a coach, you can tell when your team's not confident. You could tell when your team needs some direction and help. And, uh, and I called those timeouts because of that, you know. Uh, everybody focuses at the very, very end, but there, there were times when those timeouts really helped us. And, again, sometimes on those timeouts, we needed to reorganize our defense. We, we had a, as hard of a time defending them as any team that we've played against this season. We, we had really no answers, including, you know, they had a high-low one-foot shot, basically, to put them up. And, uh, again, they execute. They do such a great job of getting their players shots. And uh, they did a better job of that than, than I did. On the left. Uh, Ryan Leong, Associated Press Broadcast. A question for uh, Kadeem. This, of course, being your last game has to be very, uh, you know, a lot of emotions going through you. What, what, what are your thoughts after something like this? <coughs> um, you know, hats off to us. They're a good team. Um, you know, one time in their conference, they lost six in a row, and the coach did a good job to, to regroup them and, and get them back playing the basketball that they play. And, you know, tonight they played a good game. Um, like coach said, they made big shots, and, you know, we really didn't have a, um, an answer, and, and we couldn't get a stop. Um, you know, but... I'm proud of my team. Um, when you win 32 games and only five losses, it says a lot about the program and the coaching staff. And you know, I'm just I'm just proud of these guys. <clears throat> we'll go in the front, second row, Mark. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah Mark Purdy, San Jose Mercury News. Sean, I know you've been thinking about this game, but looking ahead to Saturday, what do you think will be the the key points of that game in terms of what decides it uh, with those two teams? Um, you know, I think Karnowski is just an incredible player. He's such a great passer that it's difficult to double him and it's diff difficult to crowd him because uh, he has the ability to both score but also move the ball and get his teammates shots. <coughs> you know, Gonzaga's an excellent three-point shooting team as well. And, uh, you know, to me, they're, they're good against zone man. So I, I think Xavier's scheme defensively uh, may not affect them as much, but I'll tell you this: that you know Xavier's capable of beating anybody, and uh, they're playing great basketball. Uh, I, I think again back to Trayvon Blewett and um, and Makura, two great competitors. You know, in a game like tonight, sometimes those players can really rise in, to to great heights. And you know, Blewett at 25, and in the first half. We had no answer. One thing that really hurt us in this game is Kadeem picked up two fouls early on. And he means so much to our defense that 
we really almost played the entire first half without him. And although we were up two, you know, not having him out there hurt our team. And uh, then in the second half, I thought Malcolm Bernard was great for Xavier. You know, he, he made, went three for three from the three-point line. And uh, his, his threes were big threes. So I forgot the question you asked me, to be honest with you. Karnowski, Karnowski is really a problem inside. I mean, he can do it rebounding. He can do it in the post. He can do it by passing. And uh, Gonzaga is very underrated defensively. If you look throughout the, the season, they've been probably as consistent on defense as maybe any team that, that Mark has had. They're good on both offense and defense. And I mean, look, they're, what are they, 35-1? and one? <laughs> they're, they're, they're a good team. But they're playing a very, very good team as well in Xavier and uh, – I think it's going to be a really good game. Thank you. We do one or two quick ones. We go in the middle. Uh, question for Kadeem: Just can you give us your thoughts on the the uh, comments your coach made about you as a player uh, about five minutes ago? Um, you know, it speaks for itself. Um, and my coaches, teammates, everyone in the program—they just give me the confidence um, that I've had towards the end of the season. And you know, I just took it and. I was just out there playing basketball, and I appreciated everything that he'd done for me and the coaching staff and, and my teammates, and, and I love these guys. <clears throat> okay, I think we'll close it off there. Thank you, guys.